Bella of Bella's Custom Crochets. Uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet under that name. On Instagram, I'm going to be Bella underscore custom, or Bella's underscore custom underscore crochets. Other than that, uh, you can find me pretty much anywhere by that name. And on my website, uh, bellascustomcrochets.com, you can find links to all of my social media, soon to all of these videos, which are already here, so you know how to get there. <laughs> um, my blog, my patterns, my shops, all the good stuff. I appreciate you guys being here. This is my second video now. I was blown away uh, last week by the response to the one about how to set up for craft shows. I think there are 40 of you subscribed now, which is maybe not a big number to some people, but that's a super big number to me. And <laughs> I can't believe that anybody actually wants to listen to me ramble on about crochet type stuff. So thank you so much for being here. I am truly honored. I am coming to you from my art studio. Actually, no, it is my guest room, and it happens to have a wall full of yarn. I am sitting on the floor. I have a pillow. Pillow. No shame, because sitting against a wall, yarn wall actually isn't as comfortable as you might think. But I'm here today <laughs> to talk to you guys about... I don't know to call it lingo, or terminology, or secret code phrases, or just acronyms, or what, but we're going to be talking about uh, some of the inside secret code phrases of the knit and crochet realm. I'm not talking about like half double crochet, or slip slip knit, or double pointed needles, that type of thing. Those are like hardcore terminology, not hardcore, but um, terminology that goes with the craft and is uh, industry standard established like SC is single crochet and everybody needs to use it that way. I'm talking about the um, like phrases that you're seeing showing up in podcasts or uh, in Instagram social media posts as hashtags that type of thing where you're like what are they saying? What does that mean? Also we're going to take a brief moment to acknowledge this lighting that we have going on here. This is the lighting that we have. The blinds are shut. It looks even worse with the blinds open. I'm just gonna have an illuminated shoulder, guys. It's bioluminescent. Deal with it. <laughs> it's gonna be real with you. But yeah, we're talking abbreviations that are gonna show up a lot. Uh, just fiber-related podcasters. I'm trying to position myself. I don't know how to sit on the floor and talk to a phone. It's weird. But here I am. I know that starting out for me, a lot of times people would post and I'd just be like, I do not know what they're talking about. And still there'd be stuff that comes up where I'm like tagged in something and there's like an acronym or like some weird phrase like frogging. It took me forever to figure out what frogging was and I've been crocheting for 10 plus years. And I knew how to frog. I just didn't know why it was called frogging and what people were talking about in reference to that. So we're going to talk about stuff like that. Frogging, whips, uh, FOs, tink, that sort of thing. That's what I want to talk about today because it's embarrassing and frustrating um, when it's showing up and you feel like you're the only one that does not know the secret code. So I'm going to let you in on the secret code. And none of this is like in a textbook or a dictionary anywhere. There's definitely stitch, stitch dictionaries. Oh, I can't speak. I'm sorry, guys. Stitch dictionaries where you can look up knit or crochet stitches that have been established for long periods of time and there's set abbreviations for them and that sort of thing. That you can definitely look up. But I don't know that there's a dictionary anywhere that has like FO in it. If there is, I don't have it and maybe I should get it because then this video would be unnecessary. But Anyway, that's what I want to talk about today. I've written them out on, um, like this. We'll talk about it in a second. But I've written them all out on paper so you can see them in writing. And you'll be like, oh yeah, I've seen that hashtag. And hopefully you'll just be thoroughly enlightened by the end of this. And I think I've covered, I've got quite the stock. I think I've covered most, most of the very common ones. Uh, it might be possible I missed something. I am by no means a knit expert. I am a advanced beginner at best knitter. Um, I've been knitting for a long time but haven't done a lot of knitting if that makes sense. I learned how to knit as a kid um, and only recently really started getting back into it. But I've been, been 
Ben Ben. I've been crocheting for a very long time, at least since early in high school, and contrary to popular belief, I am not still in high school. Um, so about, I think like 12-ish years now I've been crocheting. So I've, I've gotten pretty familiar with terms uh, that we're going to be going over today, but I know that a lot of times I'm still stumped, and I have to look something up, and I wish there was just like somebody knows of it. If there's a site somewhere that has all of these, point me to it and I will link it in the box below. Speaking of which, anything that I talk about in this episode uh, or any other, I will make sure to link in the down bar. Uh, and there will be a corresponding post as well on my blog at Bella's Custom Crochet slash blog. Uh, you'll be able to find, it's not going to be really be show notes, it's going to be a full blog post, but um, anything that I say here, I'm going to reiterate over there if you'd like to hear it twice. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's mostly important stuff before we get started. Oh, this is my Granny Isosceles Triangle Scarf. It's a really beginner-friendly pattern. It is also on the blog for free, or you can find it in my shops as well. It is worsted weight, but it can be made in any weight, any size. Super beginner-friendly, and it has tassels. So you should know that before we get started, because that's really important information. I think that's about it. So we're going to just go through these and I'm going to give you my definition. Uh, hopefully it's the correct definition. And yeah, definitely leave me a comment on if you struggled with any of these yourself or if you've heard them before, never heard them before, if I totally missed a super important one. Give me some feedback, guys. I really appreciate chatting with you. I'm going to do my best to answer all the questions and comments and concerns. And I've really enjoyed on the previous uh, video that you guys took your time to encourage me. That was really sweet. And I'm just blown away again. So thank you for being here and spending your valuable time with me. Without further ado, I put these in a pile this morning, so I don't remember what order they're in. So they're going to come as a surprise to me. And we're going to just go over them. And you will just learn all the things. Hopefully they're all facing the right direction. I think I laid them all in the pile correctly. We'll see. If they're upside down, I apologize. I'll flip them. Okay. Whip. WIP. Use it in a sentence, please. Whip is work in progress, or whips being works in progress. This one shows up a lot under a Whip Wednesday hashtag, or um, people will throw it in their stories uh, showing you their whips, and you're like, what are whips? Are they, just, are they just whipping up something? Like, they just whipped up that sweater, no problem. Why is there no H? No. Work in progress. S. Progress works. Works in progress. That's a whip. That one is used very commonly. I I don't know if it's used outside of knitting and crocheting. Definitely used for both knitting and crocheting, but I don't know if there's other crafters out there whipping stuff. But that, I think most people knows what know what that is at this point, but if not, we're going to cover them all. We're going to cover the basics, the complicated ones, the, the weird ones. We're covering it all. So works in progress. And we all have a lot of those. I uh, People have project bags. Project bag is self-explanatory, but people talk about project bags a lot. It's a designated bag that somebody's sewing to put knit and crocheted goods in. You can use a purse. You can use a dope bag. You can use a garbage bag. Whatever. Project bags are just fancy. Other makers are making them. Specifically with knit and crocheters in mind. But a lot of people have project bags full of whips. I don't like a lot of whips. I like to have maybe one knit project, one selfish crochet project, and one business crochet project don't like big I do not have any unfinished I have a knit sweater that's going slow but it's because I'm running a crochet business and I don't have time to knit myself sweaters um, but yeah I don't have a horde of whips a lot of people do I just get really stressed out if I have unfinished projects so we finish them all next up fo finished object some people say fo I have a fo to show you fo finished object. This is when your whip graduates from being a whip and is now finished. Any project, any item. It happens a lot on podcasts. I don't know if there's a ton of Instagrammers or Facebookers or Pinteresters talking about FOs, but podcasters sometimes have an entire section dedicated to FOs. Finished objects. It's a big deal when you finish something that you've made with your own hands. FO. Right up there with FO is HO. Ho. I don't entirely understand this because 
The next one we're going to talk about makes sense to me. Finnish object makes sense to me. H-O, ho, don't make sense to me. I think people are just using it because they think it's funny. I'm not really sure. Because they use it for half-finished object. I don't know if you know how acronyms work, but half-finished object. You need an F in there. But hefo wasn't as fun to say, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, and I don't know how you tell if a project is half finished unless it's like you have one sock out of two socks done or one mitten out of two mittens. Like, do you really reach a point in a sweater where you're like, yes, half wet? I don't know. That's a lot of fractions for me, but ho, half finished object. Now, right along with whip, we have UFO, which you might think stands for unidentified flying object. We're going to take a break here, and we're going to talk about reuse of acronyms. When I first got married, I'm going to put this down for a moment. First got married, my husband was Air Force, and the military, they loved them some acronyms. It is a whole different language. I understand knitting and crocheting is a language as well, but I don't walk around. I mean, I guess with my fibery friends, it's kind of the same, where we all speak the same language, and we can just throw out those terms and abbreviations everywhere, but the military... I did not grow up in a military family and married into the military and they are just throwing out acronyms right and left. They are reusing acronyms and it is just, it's a secret code and it's kind of overwhelming. Um, so there would be, as an example of a reused acronym, this is my favorite one because it came up so often and it got to the point in conversations where I no longer knew what the acronym meant, like each letter but I knew the context, so I could kind of pretend that I was a sufficient military wife and knew stuff. Um, but, like, by normal civilian American standard, CDC, Center for Disease Control, we know them. Um, but on the military base, there was a CDC which was not controlling diseases. It was controlling children. It was the Center for Child Development. It was a daycare center for military families. So you'd throw out CDC there. And then CDC, my husband was also doing, I may be getting this wrong, he'll tell me later. <laughs> it was like career development courses or classes or something. It was something with him being certified in his line of military work. But those were CDC. So it's just like all these, stop for using acronyms. You can only have one of each. It's very confusing. But yeah. I just, I have a love-hate relationship with acronyms. I'd rather you just say out all the words. I know your time is very valuable and like life is busy and you can only fit so many words into one day. Maybe that's why I talk fast. I don't know. You'll have to let me know too in the comments if I'm talking ridiculously fast for you. I'm notorious at fast talking. I'll try and slow down. But yeah, I know your life is busy, but can you really not say out finished object? Is it really that hard that we need to abbreviate it? I don't know. Maybe typing it out on Instagram, that's just real, real strenuous. You gotta save those thumbs for the knitting. I don't know. I'd rather just not have acronyms, but they're a thing, and I do use them. So, anyway, back to UFO. Not an identified flying object. Unless you are knitting the X-Files, then they would be identified. I don't know. UFO unfinished object, which again, not really a proper acronym because why do we get to use unfinished, which is two, two letters, but one word, but ho only gets an H. That makes no sense, guys. Come on, knitters and crocheters, get your lives together. Unfinished object, which I don't really know if that's different than a whip. Somebody commented, I pulled on Instagram for common ones that people struggled with or maybe didn't know what they meant. Um, and someone was like, is a whip the same thing as a UFO? I don't know. Like, that just sounds ridiculous when you say it out loud, by the way. Um, but yeah, at what point is it a half-finished object? What point is it a whip? At what point of it is it unfinished? Is it unfinished if you abandon it and you're like, oh, you're going in the closet, you're the unfinished object. But it's a whip if you're still working on it, maybe? Like, if you're actively still making those socks or you're just like, second sock syndrome. That's another one I didn't write down. Second sock syndrome is when you just you just can't get to that second sock and you made one and you're like, I don't want to make another one. I don't struggle with that. I was talking to my friend today. I run a crochet business where I'm used to making 
20, 50, 70 of the same item um, for market season. So making two socks is not a problem. Two mittens, not a problem. I can make the second one. Is that something you have an issue with? I don't know. It definitely is repetitive. Um, where was I going with this rant? Unfinished objects. In relation to second sock syndrome, which I also didn't write down, Sleeve Island. Sleeve Island, people will be like, I'm, I'm on Sleeve Island, guys. I think this is more with knitters because crochet is a little bit faster. A lot of bit faster. It's way faster. <laughs> which is why I like it. But yeah, Sleeve Island is when you have gotten the body of your sweater done and you're so close and then you just have to do those tedious sleeves and they're probably just in the round and it's probably just stockinette and it's kind of boring. It's... Here's another one I didn't write down. Pota potato chip knitting or potato chip crocheting. It's like, you just can't have one like a potato chip. You just got to keep going. But these aren't really acronyms. These are just silly phrases, so I don't feel bad for writing them down. I'm trying to make myself feel better for remembering things as I'm filming. But yeah, Sleeve Island is when you're just like, you're here on the sleeve and it needs to be, you know, another foot and a half long and you're like, it's not happening. Sleeve Island. Anyway, so I don't, if you know the difference between unfinished object, half-finished object, and work in progress, obviously we know what a finished object is. I don't know where the differentiation in there is. I don't know stuff, guys. I'm just pretending. <laughs> Up next, this one is a crochet one, and I honestly, I'll be real, I don't know if people say hoff or T-O-T-H. Are people saying Hoth? I've never heard anyone say it out loud. It's always been a hashtag or in like a written post. But this is hot off the hook. Hooks. Hook. Um, this is like the finished, I feel like finished object is maybe what knitters use more often and Hoth, if anyone's saying that. If not, I sound like a fool. <laughs> hot off the hooks is, or hook, because you're only using one unless you were changing sizes. That is when you just you just finished off that crochet project. It's just hot off the hook, like hot off the press, I guess. I don't love that one. I don't see it used as much anymore. I feel like that was maybe a few years ago, guys. I don't know. But yeah, that um, was one that definitely confused me for a while, and I had to look up. And sometimes I'm looking at them, and I'm like trying to guess like some sort of game show what the acronym is trying to insert different knit and crochet phrases. Yeah. So I'm trying to prevent that for you guys. I'm trying to help you. Let me help you. I don't know why we need to have these secret code phrases. Like we're a secret club. Whatever. This one is almost always preceded by a hashtag. And I honestly didn't know what this... I don't think anyone says Widen. Widen? I think everybody says W-I-D-N. Again, I've never heard it said out loud. It's always as a hashtag or um, like in somebody's story. People started tagging me a few years ago when I started on Instagram. And they'd tag me and it would be like a picture of them doing something. Knit or crochet related or otherwise. Like walking a dog, whatever. And then it would be a tag for like four other people. Hashtag. <laughs> I, was like, I don't know what that means. Um, I eventually figured it out. It's what I'm doing now, guys. What I'm doing now. So you post a picture of you, like, sipping your coffee and reading a book. What I'm doing now. You're on the beach. What I'm doing now. Uh, it, let's be honest. Nobody is, now people are doing the stop and drop a selfie, but, like, if you get that notification and you're on the toilet, you're not stopping and dropping a selfie. Let's be real here. Um, so yeah, you kind of wait to the opportune moment to post that to your feed or your um, stories. So what I'm doing now I feel like is a curated what I'm doing with my life. If I'm driving, I'm not going to give you a what I'm doing now because first of all I'm not checking my notifications because I'm driving. Or you know, you're in the middle of something, you're not doing what I'm doing now. I also feel like what I'm making now would have been, been made more sense because really do I need people to know like, what am I doing now? Brush my hair! Brush my teeth, guys! I, I don't know if you need that much detail in my life. Do you? <laughs> People like vlogs, maybe. Uh, but yes, so that's what I'm doing now. Hashtag. I don't get 
get tagged in those as much anymore, but people are still doing them. Uh, occasionally as a post. Uh, not something you really talk about in a podcast. I don't think people are... I think they're telling you with their mouth what they're doing now, or what they've been doing. But yeah, what I'm doing now. That one was hard to figure out. I think that's not just knit and crochet. I think that's just social media related. I think people do that. I don't know. Sometimes, like, I'm definitely getting old. I'm close to 30, guys. I know I don't look it, but I am. Um, but, like, my sister-in-laws or, like, young, even my younger sisters, young, young cool people will post stuff and I'll be like, I know what those, I know what that is. Like, I have a sister-in-law who's always posting in her story LMR, which I think means like my recent, like, go see my recent post. But I was like, what is LMR? But yeah, I, I am really not up on the cool people terminology, but I know this knit and crochet stuff, so I'll share that with you. If you want a video on what cool kids are saying, this is not it, guys. Too old for that. Moving on. Tink. This one is mind-blowing. If you don't know what tinking is, it's knit backwards. Tink, um, I'm not entirely sure if it's... I'm not an expert knitter, you'll have to let me know. Is tinking the, if you rip back, like you made a mistake and you realized 75 rows back, <laughs> you purled on a knit stitch and you are just, you're not having that. You need it to be perfect or, you know, you missed something somewhere or whatever. So you take it and you rip it back. Is that, I'm pretty sure tinking, because you can say tinking too. I'm pretty sure that's when you're actually stitch by stitch moving backwards. So you like take it off, put it over there, take it off, put it over there. You're not doing this because that's, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's not knitting. Um, I'm pretty sure tinking is when you're stitch by stitch undoing the stitch you just did and moving it back over to where it came from. And it's a long and tedious process. I don't think you can rip back 56 rows with a, a lifeline is when you, um, like sew through with scrap yarn back to a point where you need to rip back so you're not going to drop any stitches. So I'm not sure if you rip back and have like a lifeline and then you pick up those stitches again. I don't think that's tinking. I don't really know. Also, I avoid ripping things back. I am not the best knitter. I am definitely not the best fix the thing I messed up knitter. So I try not make mistakes and if it's like a sock and I'm like, Mm, that was supposed to be a knit stitch, but it's a purl stitch now. Oh well, it's on my foot. Who's gonna care? I am not that much a perfectionist. If it's a product that I'm selling, um, I don't sell knitwear. I sell crocheted stuff, but I will absolutely go back and fix that because I'm selling it to you and it should be perfect, but if I'm making it for myself and there's an extra stitch, I'm like, well, crochet two together. Fix that problem. Yes. Related to that. Frog or frogging. It is the crochet equivalent of tinking, basically. Um, this one, for a long time, I didn't know what people were talking about. I knew it was very easy to rip back crocheted things. It's way easier than knitting because you don't have stitches that are going to be dropped and disappear. You just rip it back and then you start again. It's great. Crochet perks. But frogging is apparently, I don't know who came up with this, but I've been told that it is called frogging because you're rip it, rip it, rip it back. Like rip it, rip it, rip it, frog. Kind of cheesy. Um, frogging. So you realize that the two sleeves on your sweater are not the same size, you're gonna frog that bad boy. You're gonna rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it. Ripping crochet out is kind of satisfying, but it's sad because you just made the thing and you have to fix it. Um, but even my husband knows this one. I should do a side note, we should do a video where Jojo has to define these things because he is pretty knowledgeable. He does all my events with me. He is super supportive. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to see. I know he knows frogging, so I've explained that one, but I know he would not know the knitting stuff and most of the Instagram stuff. He does not do social media. Anyway, maybe I can get him to do a video at the end. We'll see. Also, this heavenly light is getting ever so more heavenly. I don't have a professional recording spot, guys. I'm sitting on my floor. Okay. We're going to keep on moving. Also, the reason some are on yellow and some are on pink is because I ran out of pink paper. I didn't think there were that many, and then I had more ideas. So, yarn chicken. Yarn chicken is another weird one that I 
I don't really understand. If somebody knows why it's yarn chicken, um, is your, I guess playing chicken is a thing, but I, again, don't know really what that means. But, um, yarn chicken is when you are, you're working on your project and you're down to like the last two rows and you have this ball of yarn and you're like I don't know if we're gonna make it guys and it's getting smaller and you're going and you're like tightening up your gauge a little bit and knit or crochet you're, you're just trying to get to the end with the amount of yarn that you have because you do not want to order another $30 skein of yarn and wait for it to come in the mail you don't even want to go to the store and buy another $4 skein of yarn and wait for it to come in the mail you just you don't want that so you are just doing whatever it takes to get to the end of that project with the yarn that you have and if you get to the end and you did not run out of yarn you have won at yarn chicken guys you win yarn chicken that just sounds like like a side dish or something yarn chicken uh, <laughs> so you win at the yarn chicken if you don't run out of yarn and you have just enough to get to the end and still sew in your ends and it's perfect um i also feel like i really win at when i buy like a really special yarn and I have enough to do my whole project, but I don't have a bunch left. I really appreciate designers who design with that in mind, that you don't, like, use a couple yards of one skein, and then you're left with this super nice yarn, but you bought it for that project. I feel like I win at Yarn Chicken when the designer thinks about that. And I try and think about that in my designs, too, that you're not going to have to go buy, you know, a sixth ball of something to do two rows. Um, so I don't know if that's really Yarn Chicken, but I feel like you win at the Yarn Chicken. You lose at Yarn Chicken when you have six stitches left and you ran out of yarn or any amount of ridiculous stitches. You're like, really? I waited three weeks for this to come in the mail. It was custom dyed. Or it's a one of a kind. That's the worst. If it's a discontinued yarn or a one of a kind yarn that you can't get more of and you lose that yarn chicken. Oh boy. That's bad. That's bad guys. So at that point, again, if it's my own project and not something I'm selling, I will totally alter the pattern. I will change my gauge. I will get a tinier hook. I am getting to the end with the yarn that I have. We are not buying more yarn. Ridiculous. Okay, enough on yarn chicken. Yarn vomit. I hate the word vomit, guys. It's, it makes me want to vomit. Uh, this is one that somebody suggested when I pulled on Instagram that I totally had forgotten about. Yarn vomit is when you buy, usually like a, this type of skein, from a box store. I guess it could happen with a hank as well or once you've already caked your yarn up. But it's basically your yarn. It looks neat and tidy and innocent. And then you go to start your project or maybe you're even in the middle of your project. That's the most annoying because you can't unravel it really at that point. You gotta cut stuff and it's... Mm -mm. But you pull it out and it's like... Bleh! Yarn vomit. There's like this giant knot that you're like, how did this happen? It was made by a machine. Were, were there monkeys running through the factory throwing stuff? Like how did this occur? Um, yarn vomit. Nobody likes it. Uh, or like when you have it nice and caked and it looks all innocent and you're just going along and then all of a sudden it's like Bleh! That was a horrible noise. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just awful and it's like in disemboweled body and it's just parts and intestines everywhere and you're like I don't know if we can come back from this. I don't know if we can recover. And it's just sad and very rarely I always avoid to try cutting always try to avoid always try to put my sentences in order always try to avoid cutting yarn uh, unnecessarily because that means more ends to weave in and wasting yarn and you don't want to you don't want to be playing the yarn chicken um also this whole video is going to be slapping my thighs repeatedly let's just accept that <laughs> i'm still getting used to this guys i'm sorry if i'm super weird at it but anyway i will fold my hands in my beam of sunlight and maybe behave myself for a minute. Yarn vomit. I never throw away yarn unless the yarn has been like maimed and it is beyond repair. Like I think at one point I had some natural fiber that lived in a box in a basement in my parents house and like something chewed it. At that point you throw it away because that's gross but other than that I'm not throwing away yarn. I will deal with the yarn vomit. I will tediously unravel all that vomit. Get all up in there. Unravel it all. <laughs> yarn vomit. It's terrible. It's as bad as it sounds, I promise. Okay, we're getting out of the weird ones into some more... We're almost to events. We have two more and then we're into event acronyms, in case you were wondering where we're going. 
craftivist, craftivism. This one is uh, becoming increasingly popular as I'm not sure if it's limited to the knit and crochet or if other makers like beaters, sewers, that sort of thing, if they're craftivisting. Um, but yeah, as the craftivism, let me explain it first, is um, when someone is using their platform, I'm doing it with my hands again, <laughs> their platform, social media or otherwise, um, they have a lot of followers or they have five followers, whatever, you can make a difference with the people you have. It is using your um, realm of influence to uh, create change. So it's right now, uh, I feel like a big focus in the fiber community at least is inclusion, be it sizes or people groups or whatever. If there's enough yarn for all of us guys. There's enough room here for everybody and um, a lot of people are really taking a very strong stance on inclusion. And yeah, so you're a craftivist, I guess, if um, you're not just making beautiful things, but you're using your little tiny spot on the internet to make our community more beautiful, I guess. Um, I think that's probably the simplest definition of craftivism, because there's enough yarn for everybody. There's enough craft supplies for everybody. I firmly believe that um, people were created to create. Um, and yeah, it makes me happy when all the people are doing all the creating. So that is craftivism. This one, I don't know why I put it in quotes because these are all kind of weird phrases. Also, look, I almost ran out of room, but I made it fit. I played paper chicken. Paper chicken. Um, stash quisitions. This one's hard to say, and it sounds like inquisition. Um, that's not what I'm looking for. Is that what I'm looking for? Like you're about to be having your head chopped off. Is that the word I'm looking for? Anyway, it's supposed to sound like acquisition, like I've acquired a thing. Yeah, inquisition, I think that's what I'm looking for. I don't know, we need to do a separate video on things that I'm confusing you on. <laughs> but podcasters use this a lot. There will be a whole section on stashquisitions, or there's a couple other ones that they call it too, but basically it's stuff that you bought for your hobby, for your business, or whatever you wanted to talk about, new tea, new makeup, whatever. But stash position is usually for a yarn stash, so it's usually yarn. Um, maybe project bags, new needles, new hooks. Something to add to your fibery stash. Look at this light, guys. Ah, that was terrible and off-key. I don't know what key we're in. Just pitchy. I can sing. Not really. Okay, we're moving to events. Where are we at here? We're at, we're at 33 minutes. We can make it. I gotta check the time here because I have a time frame I'm supposed to be working on. Alright, we got a couple minutes. We're gonna jam through this. VKL. Now we're in events that people are just throwing out all the time. VKL is Vogue Knitting Live. The main one happens in New York. Um, and I believe at the end of January, beginning of February, if I'm correct, I've never been. To any of these events let me just say that i've never been to any of them i am no expert on these events i don't sell there i don't shop there haven't been there i would like to at some point but vkl is vogue knitting live um they do have a couple others that are in other parts of the u.s um i feel like there's one that happens in like the seattle area maybe they might move around every year i'm not really positive because i live closest to the new york one in connecticut um but i've never been so VKL, people talk about that a lot. Um, another one that comes up a lot is OML, which is Our Maker Life. Um, it is put on by the Our Maker Life, I don't know if they call themselves a group or what they are, but Our Maker Life is kind of like maybe a conference or a, they have like a keynote speaker and it's all of, it's like a maker meetup. Um, they move it around every year. Right now, they're currently voting. If you go to the Our Maker Life Instagram page, there's a link to the city that they're going to be doing it in for 2020. I think Portland is currently winning, but like San Fran and New York and maybe Houston. Some other ones are up for grabs, too. So they let uh, the fiber community vote on where it's going to be. Last year was in Chicago, maybe? I've never been, but it, it looks really fun. Uh, and I always get kind of the the FOMO, the fear of missing out, 
um, about these events. So, yeah, that's all I make. That one happens in July, I think, our Maker Life. So, OML, you're seeing people talking about that, or maybe t shirts or hashtags. OML 2020. That's what that is. This one is not an event, but I threw it in there. LYS. Also, don't know why I started changing my font when I did the eventy ones. I just did. LYS is your local yarn store. Um, it's usually a small yarn store that you're supporting um, local. So not like Hobby Lobby. Even if that's local to you, that's kind of, you know, it's considered a big box store. An LYS is like the cute little lady down the road owns it with her friends and they have all the hand dyed yarns and maybe some Malabrigo, Malabrigo that kind of thing. Local yarn store. Shop local, guys. Small businesses matter. EYF is the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. This one takes place in Scotland. Definitely never been to that one. Um, that one happens, it used to be yearly, but now they're doing some sort of alternate year type thing. I don't know if it just got too big or really what their plan is, but they're not doing one in 2020. Um, but I think it happens in around St. Patrick's Day. March, uh, it is a big shopping type event um, in Edinburgh, Scotland, uh, with all of the major you know, all those names that you're familiar with as far as yarn dyers and like project bags and all those wool washes and project or progress keepers and stitch markers and all those fiber arty things. EYF. Similar and actually the last card that I have is Rhinebeck. Um, I'm not sure when this video will go up, but Rhinebeck is currently starting tomorrow. Um, in the third week of October, maybe? This takes place in Rhinebeck, New York, um, which is why it's called that. It's actually the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. Most states, a lot of them, I don't know if it's all of them, but a lot of states have a insert your state sheep and wool festival. I know we have a Connecticut sheep and wool, and there's also a New England sheep and wool that takes place in the beginning of November. Um, but Rhinebeck is kind of like the yarn mecca, I feel like. It's very, people come from around the world um, to come to Rhinebeck. My goal is to maybe go next year, um, but I have a, a baby this year. Bringing a two-year-old is probably also not a great idea, but uh, <laughs> at some point, probably go to Rhinebeck, because I looked it up, and it's like, I think an hour and 45, hour and a half, or not, not an hour, two and a half-ish hours away from where I am. So I'll probably go at some point. I know my mom wants to go. Rhinebeck, um, Christy Glass Knits has kind of coined Rhinebeck sweater. Actually, I don't know if she did, but I know that she made a video that kind of virally took over the fiber community about tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater. So a Rhinebeck sweater is just a sweater that you've made specifically for Rhinebeck. Some other big events that happen are um, like the Stitches events. We have Stitches United, Stitches West, Stitch like Stitch. Um, DFW is the Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Fest, I believe. Um, there's, I don't know all of the events, but there's a lot that get shortened because their names are long. But I think, I think I covered most of the big stuff. Hopefully I didn't talk too fast. If I did, sorry, I'm, again, trying to get out of my sunbeam here. <laughs> I'm new at this, and I'm having a lot of fun. I am just so thrilled that you guys want to sit and hang out with me. Um, it's really, seriously an honor. And I'm hoping that this channel, I don't know if I'm going to go in the direction of podcast. I would like to eventually. I think that'd be really fun. Um, but I also, I'm looking into getting um, some new equipment for tutorials to do like um, videos like over my hands while I'm working to maybe do some tutorials that go along with stitches um, for patterns that I release or just some helpful stuff for um, crocheters. I won't be doing knit tutorials because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I have a fair idea of what I'm doing with crochet. So I feel like I could help you guys. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, if you're enjoying these videos for whatever they are right now, I would love it if you would like and or subscribe. Liking definitely helps with the um, algorithm, I guess, of YouTube, just getting your content seen by other people who might be interested in it um, as like a suggested video or the ones that autoplay next, that kind of thing. Um, so liking makes a big difference. And subscribing also gets me some more visibility. Uh, I am really thrilled that anybody at all subscribed, but if you subscribe, that means it'll just show up in your um, feed I think it's called. I know it's a feed for Instagram. I don't really know about YouTube. But it'll show up so that you see it when I post something new. Um, but you might miss it. So if you want to make sure you don't miss anything that I post, because I know I'm 
riveting, guys. Um, you can sub not subscribe. You can turn on. Uh, there's a little bell shape um, that you can turn on notifications, so you'll actually get a notification in your phone when I put something new up. Because right now I don't have a schedule. I'm doing this very much so as it fits into my schedule. I am a stay-at-home mom of an 11-month-old, and her schedule is that of an 11-month-old. So. Momming is first, and then I'm also running a crochet business, and I'm in the peak of market season right now, and also, you know, writing patterns and doing the blogging and getting testers and all that takes up a lot of time. Making the finished items, obviously. And, you know, just living my life as an adult human. Uh, so, I don't currently have a day that I'll be releasing on, so if you want to get all of my content, all of the times that it goes up, definitely turn on the notification. Follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, again, Bella's Custom Crochets, you can find it all on my website, I will link it down below. Follow me, like my stuff, be my best friend, whatever, or don't, I don't care. <laughs> I appreciate you listening to me talk, it's really awesome, and I think I covered everything I wanted to cover today. I know I made a lot of weird faces, I know I slapped my thighs a bunch of times, I don't know making it up as we go. I'm just keeping it real with you guys. My husband's going to edit some of the stuff. I think the school bus just came. You may have heard that. Uh, my husband is a pretty decent video editor. He's very excited about this video endeavor of mine. So he's going to do the editing. And yeah, we're not going to be doing any drastic cuts on stuff unless like the phone rings or I start having a sneezing fit or something. But other than that, these are pretty much all just going to be me rambling stream of consciousness type talking so I appreciate you guys and until I post again next time who knows what I'll be posting about I don't even know yet <laughs> until I post again thank you for being here thank you for watching and happy making my friends let me know if this video was helpful to you at all and I will see you again soon bye Hang on, what is it like, Bella? It's like <laughs> What? It's like what?